Hey guys, so the coronavirus is going around. N95 masks are hard to find uh, because people keep buying them off the shelves. Um, doctors and hospitals are in need of these masks. So I decided to do a video about how you could make your own mask from materials that you would find in your own home. Many people today are wearing masks to prevent the spread of COVID-19. In fact, it's now becoming a trend on social media and is used as an everyday accessory. However, this will do little to protect you from getting the virus. In general, surgical mask filter particles to approximately 5 microns in size. Because of this, it's only best to use them if you're sick as a way to block the virus from finding another mode of transmission. N95 is a government efficiency rating that means the mask blocks about 95% of the particles that are 0.3 microns in size or larger. The COVID-19 virus is approximately 0.125 microns. It often travels in biological aerosols from coughing and sneezing, which ranges in sizes from 0.5 to 0.3 microns. Introducing the Big Bits N100 mask. It's water resistant and has replaceable filters. It's comfort fitting and made entirely out of material you'd find in your own home. The mask is far more effective than an N95 mask and with proper care could last for months. And at a cost of $1.50 each, it's guaranteed to be your mask of choice for frontline care when commercial masks are of no use. Make yours today, some assembly required. First, I went over to renderpeople.com and downloaded a free human scan, and I modeled a mask to fit using Maya so I could keep the polygon count low. This helps to accurately unfold the model into cardboard pieces later. My goal with this project was to use things that might already be lying around the house. But if they're not, you can still find them readily available in stores as none of these components have been hoarded yet. Now you got to go find the thickest cardboard that you can find. For me that was a fruit snack box. Um, it feels like it's about three times thicker than a cereal box, so we want it to be sturdy but we want it to be thin. Step 1. Cut out the cardboard using the template on the Big Bits website. We want the mask to be reusable, which means we have to make it water resistant. I did this by coating the inside surface with clear packing tape. I connected the points with a straight edge and scored the cardboard with a blade so it could be easily folded. Then I taped up all the seams and edges with masking tape. I specifically chose masking tape because I will coat the outside in Plasti Dip and it sticks nicely to the masking tape. Remember that pudding that I bought? We're going to use the cups as uh, the filter cartridge. So the important thing is that you get cups that are tapered so that they're stackable. This little spot right in there is where that filter is going to go. So we've got just enough space in there for that HEPA filter. filter that I got is a HEPA filter for a shop vac. This particular HEPA filter filters out 99.97 percent of all things over 0.3 microns in size. We're going to seal up all the cracks and crevices with silicone. I'm 
I'm going to use Plasti Dip to make the outside surface of this mask impenetrable. Ironically, you need to be wearing a P100 mask when you spray Plasti Dip. This coating will not only make the surface impenetrable, but it will also make it water resistant, meaning the mask can be sterilized and reused. For a cheaper option, just use packing tape to seal the outside. Here I made a simple one-way valve to make exhaling easier and to help cut down on moisture buildup inside the mask. This is an optional step and may or may not decrease the protective qualities of the mask. The valve is made of two layers of rubber, the inside layer has a hole in the center, and the outside layer is stretched tightly over the hole with a gap in the tape to let the air out. Now I'm going to use some common dish gloves to make a nice seal around the outside. There are many types of dish gloves. It may be best to use a latex-free glove to prevent allergic reactions. The important thing here is to use a thick enough rubber that it seals the mask around your face. Now we use the silicone again to seal the rubber gasket to the inner edge of the mask. For the strap we're going to use shoelaces. Make sure the hole for your strap is on the outside of your rubber seal. So no build like this would be complete without a test. Natural wood smoke particles get down to about 0.3 microns at the smallest. That's about how big this virus gets at its biggest. So there is some overlap there. Plus the uh, N95 and N100 masks are made to block the um, particle sizes of at least 0.3 microns in size. So the best test I could do is blow a lot of smoke at my mask and see um, if a cloth on the other side of it would be clean. So I hooked up a shop vac to the other side with a sponge in the way so it didn't have too much air pressure sucking in because I wanted it to simulate what our lungs would actually be doing when we're breathing. So the first time I did this test, uh, the cloth came out brown. This is the hole in the dummy's mouth. Uh, but what I noticed, and you might not be able to see this, is around the outside edges here, uh, it is very tan which means the smoke was coming in from around the mask, not through the filters. Then I did another test where I put clay around the mouth of the dummy to simulate the softness of the skin um, and to give kind of a better seal around the outside. It came out clean. I also tried it with the N95 mask that is commercially available and I got the same results, however, when I was testing my mask, I was wearing the N95, and when I was testing the N95 mask, I was wearing my mask. My mask actually blocked more of the scent, the odor from the, the smoke, than the N95 did. So I believe it is a true N100 mask, um, and because I had the problem around the outside edges with form fitting to the face, I did make a few adjustments, and those adjustments are reflected in the template that is at makingbigbits.com. So go ahead and download that template now. Uh, if everybody was to make a handful of these masks with whatever materials they had a hold of, uh, we could supply potentially hundreds, if not a thousand of these masks and hopefully uh, help just a little bit with these medical professionals and the shortage of equipment. So get out there and make things, do things, and make a difference.